Well, good morning, guys. How are y'all today? Guys, I come up with an idea how to make my rabbit cages last longer, the floors. Even though I use good rabbit cage wire, and I can't remember what gauge that is, I think that's either 14, 16 maybe. But rabbits, you know, they'll choose their corner they pee and poop in, and that floor rots out. And I ain't got over three years out of a floor out of any of my cages. But I'd put this new wire in here. I already had the wire. And I know you can buy that rubber-coated wire, but it's a lot more expensive. And plus, I already had this wire. So since I just put this flooring in here, actually, I didn't just do it. I'd done it a few, several weeks ago back in the winter. But since the buck rabbit I got rid of and I didn't have no rabbit in here, I'll power wash this cage good. And I was thinking, well, since I didn't have rubber coated wire, I bought some of this. This here is rubberized undercoating for your vehicles. And I'm putting a second coat on the floor wire here today. Yesterday evening, I got out here and put my first good coat on the floor with this and just got the cheap as black paint I can find, which paint ain't cheap no more. Used to, used to I'd say a dollar can of spray paint can make things look a little bit better, but nowadays it's a six dollars is the cheapest can of paint I can find. But I just kind of give a whole cage here a little black coat here just to cover up the rusting on the wire, and I plan on doing my other cages as I get to them. But after I got this and was using it, this is rubber coating. And since it's just on the floor, I don't think the rabbit will chew on it. But I could have went with that bed liner spray. And since I only got this can here to test on this, when I get ready to do my three pin rabbit pin over here, I might get the bed liner in the spray can. But that should make that wire last a lot longer. And plus, that corner that whatever the new book going in here chooses, if I start seeing it wearing off or rust coming through, I could just power wash that one corner and keep that one corner sprayed because it's aggravating putting a new floor in a cage. I mean, I had to take this off the frame, take the top off, get it out here, turn it upside down. It's just aggravating. Especially this cage I got built over here. And we'll look at it in a moment. I built it as a hanging cage where the floor is actually clipped all together just like this cage here is on the sides. But I thought that's something some of you might not have thought about. Rubber coating your wire on your rabbit's cages make your floors last longer and that's probably going to be a little bit better on their hops. Now this is my three cage pen. This is the one I built when I first started with rabbits a few years ago. And it's got the top and then a little hangover on the back. Compartment it off into three, three bunks right here. But once these, I get through kitten rabbits this summer. And I'm done doing that. Then I'm going to clean these pens up and spray them the same way. Now old Gwen here, she had five, and again, didn't but two of them make it. She ain't been having much luck lately. Watch out, don't jump out of my hand. Ain't them rabbits some cute little things? Little American blue rabbits. And then Loretta there, she's got eight this time. This has always been Gwen's pen, and you can see she poops and pees right here in this back corner. And that wire there actually has done started coming loose. It ain't rusted in two. I'm gonna have to clamp it back right here to this one. It's got a weak spot right there because it looks like it's pulled up over there for some reason. Staple that back down. But that's why I'm gonna go on and get that bed liner next time, that hard coating instead of the rubberized undercoating. 
power wash this and see if I can get another couple years out of this wire. And I think it'll work. I'll move over to the next pin, little Hank here. He uses that same corner that backs up against. Get out the way so they can see. He uses that same corner back there. You can see that's where they do a lot of their setting. Because look how smashed down. It's plumb bent down. But again, that ain't rusted in two yet. So if I coat that with that bed liner and coat them boards, that ought to make this cage last a couple more years. And I didn't give these a good coating. Because of my can there was about out of paint. But these little hutches right here, guys, I built two of them out of one of them tubes. One of them mineral tubes just like that and sitting right there. And all I done was cut that tub right in half. Took a little bitty piece of plywood and put it in the back. And I just got some little metal hangers here. That's, that's called plumber's tape. Metal tape that you use to hang plumbing. Of course, ain't no bottom in it. They set straight on the wire, but when it's got cold, cold down in the teens this winter, I put them hay in here. That way wind can't come up in there. Trying to give them a little hide out. Now, the little hole I put in here for them to go in and out, <laughs> I actually drilled a bunch of little holes all the way around it and took some small wire and basically sewed around and around and around. Cause when I first made these, they was wanting to chew on this plastic. And that's the only place they'd want to chew on it, I guess, cause they was laying in their board, they'd go, go to eating on the door. But when I took the time and sewed that wire around and around and around it, that stopped that. But they make for some good little rabbit hutches and they get up on top of them and sit on the top. Cause in my other cages, I got what I call bunk beds put in there. So when the females has their kits, they can get up on their bunk bed and get away from their kits for a little while. Well, these male rabbits, they like laying on top of them bunk beds, if you want to call it that. And they'll lay up there. I brought it in and cracked this one up too. I just painted them black so it all kind of blend in. When I get done everything out here, all these cages, y'all know everything I got out here is built out of scrap materials and stuff like that. I want everything painted black or either a dark brown or like this cage is green. I won't repaint it for that tin can green. I want everything to blend in that way when you drive up out there and you look out here you don't just stand out like a bunch of stuff built out of different colors when it's dark you kind of don't see all this standing out <laughs> so i think i just heard the ups truck pull off let's go see what he brought well it looks like we got some amazon deliveries here and one thing that was in the box is i was needing this and y'all may have seen on a video just a few short days ago where I was looking for this tool right here a little grabber to get down in the gas tank to get something out and I couldn't find it I had that thing for years so I got another one of them lay that right there so I can put that out there in my tool box in the shed the next thing I got is me a new grinder I burned one of my grinders up the other day, and I have to sharpen lawnmower blades so much. I got a battery power in that cobalt, but it uses it up so much. I got a, had two electric ones, and well, I actually burned it up a long time ago. It was an old one, but I was down to one. Well, I went to looking on Amazon. And they had this win, W-E-N. Guys, I'm going to tell y'all, getting this right out the box, it looks a lot like that Black & Decker I had. 
But that black and darker wood, and it's heavy. This thing on here is heavy built. I don't know what that weighs, but that's pretty daggum heavy. But this is a four and a half inch grinder. Of course, it comes with a little shield. And of course, I don't put shields on mine. That's all I'm going to say about that. I don't put shields on mine. It's kind of like weed eaters. I don't like shields on my weed eaters. It comes with one, four and a half by a quarter, by seven eighths. Seven eighths talking about the hole in it. Grinder disc. And that's the one I won't put on here. And it's got the little wrench. You tighten it up. And it's got the little handle. And you can put the handle on either side. I'm going to have it right here on the left. So we'll test that out here in just a moment after we see what else we got from Amazon. Waterfall pool fountain. I don't know what brand that is. But summer buddy pool found. Now we're gonna try to get this hooked up on my pool over there because I had a homemade one rigged up over there. And these pool fountain guys, they really work great whenever you get in that extreme heat of the summer. It'll cool your water pool. It'll cool your pool water down tremendously by it coming out and spraying in the air through the night. So we're gonna get this hooked up, and I'm gonna have to see. Got the little sprinkler heads. This basically looks. I'm gonna go get the one I made after I get this put together. This basically looks similar to the one I had made. Now, of course, this one looks a little better. Mine was just made out of scrap PVC stuff. But I got to get this one to where to connect like my other one was because I had my other one where it would connect into the same fitting that my Polaris pool back would. That way I didn't have to take the fitting on and off and back and forth. It's got this part screws on just like this. And that actually swivels. It swivels up and down so you can adjust it, turn side to side. Like I said, we're going to get it over there. And it's also got a valve right here that you can open and close that adjusts the pressure that's coming out of these. Now this is made to screw straight on to your port A on your above ground swimming pools. That would screw straight on to your port A, which is to return water from your pump going back into the pool. So I'm going to move over there and see if I have my little fitting will fit on here and hook this up and show y'all it in action. Then we're going to check out this wind. I can't believe this is a... Guys, they had this on sale. Again, I'll put the link in the description below this video. They had this on sale like... I don't know, it was like half price of other grinders. Less, less than half price if you want to buy a Makita or one of the big name brand ones. But I've always had great luck. That, that one old one around there is a Black & Decker. I know I've had that thing 20 some years. And it's still a going. But this thing's heavy built. That surprised me. Win. W-E-N. I know they make a lot of power plants. So guys, this ain't going to hook straight into my fitting that I had for my Polaris pool vac. But now I don't hardly use the Polaris pool vac once I got my pool clean from all the leaves unless it comes a big storm blows a lot of leaf in here and then I can easily just unscrew this part right here from port A which is right there 
But this all it does is just screw right on to your port A. Just that quick and simple. Actually, it's better, guys, if you take this off, take this part off, screw this one on there first. After I started that, I'm like, well, this is an easier way to do that because I can screw it on there real easy. And then this piece right down here swivels, and then you can screw it on to the end like so. So very easy to install. And like I said, in the heat of the summer, these things really makes a difference. Now, I had my homemade one on here. It's been on here for two years, and it done good. But we're going to try this new one out this year. Let's fire her up. Now, you can adjust this. Down here, I was talking about that closes it up, makes the water pressure stronger. Blow it up in the air like that, or you can open it up and lower it back down. However, you like your fountain. Now, when the kids are swimming, I like turning it up. That way, they can get out there and float up under it and stuff. Now, that narrow shoot all the way across the pool. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, it'll shoot all the way across the pool when I close it. I'm going to say for that right there, that's good. You also can adjust these on each side. You can have them blowing down. Get them however, however you like. But if you got a above ground pool and you don't have one of these, it's nice to, like I said, you can turn it up, make that water go up. Kids are swimming or floating around, they can go up under it and cool off. Turn that nut there on up, it'll go all the way across this 18-foot pool. Now, of course, I'd, that's going to determine how big a pump you got and how much pressure your pump's pumping. Now, here was the homemade one I had. Basically looked just like that sitting on there. But I didn't have no way of adjusting it the way I had it fixed on this fitting that went on to my fitting that stayed on there for my Polaris 65 vacuum. But that's all right. We got it set up now. Now let's go see how this wind grinder is going to work. Well, this is the Black & Decker that I've had for years. And it was bought at Walmart. And it has been a good one and it's still going. But for me sharpening blades, y'all see how the trigger's way back here on the handle? And that's real front heavy on your wrist. Now the other one I had, actually I'm seeing Black & Decker, that last one I had. Yeah, it was a Black & Decker. Looked similar to this, but it wasn't as heavy. But what I like about it, see the power switch is right here, and you can hold your hands up here instead of that weight out there on your wrist while you're sharpening blades. Now, I ain't got a blade here, because all my blades I just sharpened. But yeah, I'm going to like that better. Now, guys, I will tell you, a person don't need to take his grinder shield off because you can get your fingers in there. So I ain't suggesting you not put your shield on, but I just don't like it on there. And you at least need to have some leather gloves on when you ain't got a shield on there. 
But that's the wind. Now, how long it's going to last, I don't know. But it's, like I said, it's, it's as heavy duty built as this Black & Decker. It ain't no little light plastic nothing, I tell you that. So, ain't. So, I'm happy with that. Now, I think we're finna cook up a little bit of something. Get these put up. The reason I like having two, I can keep the sharpening blade on one. I keep a wire brush on another to brush all the grass and stuff off my blades, and I ain't got to change back and forth. This makes it a lot quicker when you sharpen them blades about every four days around here. We are about to make us something for supper. So what is Papa all up to today? Well, tonight we're going to have cheese, pepper, this pepper jack cheese filled ground venison meatballs. And then I'm going to make some kind of mushroom sauce to eat over the top of it. So as always, I get all my stuff out and I'm using pepper jack cheese, but all we had pepper jack cheese in was like thin sandwich spread. So I just cut them in strips and rolled them up in little balls. We got some green onions, a couple of green onions out of the garden. Plus I got some dehydrated onion jars there. I'm going to add in with it. We got a couple of cloves of uh, garlic minced up, cut up. We got a can of cream of chicken, about a quarter of a cup of red wine. I don't know if it's the right for cooking or not, but we're going to use it tonight. We got a little can of mushrooms. We got some bacon bits. My salt and pepper is mixed in here. We're going to Need about a teaspoon of butter, a little bit of olive oil, some of Miss Lippy's voodoo dust. And what else we got? Oh, I got some old bread that was getting old that I toasted real good. And then we got about a pound of ground venison. I got some milk sitting here on the back for backup in case I need it. So what we're going to start with is the meatballs here, guys. And I'm going to take some of Miss Lippy's Voodoo Dust. And I don't do no measuring when I cook. I'm going to give it just a good dash of that. And then I'm going to take some of this white pepper and pink salt. And I'm going to sprinkle it real good with that. We're going to take some of these bacon bits right here. We ain't going to go too heavy on them. Just put a few bacon bits in there. That ought to be enough. I ain't wanting just totally bacon flavor. I'm going to take just a little bit of my garlic right here. Sprinkle in it. Then I'm going to take this toast and I'm going to just crumble it up in there. I should have toasted that toast a little bit more than I did. Some of it there ain't going to get used. All I want is what's crumbling. If it ain't crumbling, I don't want it in there. Alright, I'm going to throw this in the garbage can. And one thing I forgot here is one rooster bullet. That would be an egg if y'all don't know what a rooster bullet is. Then I'm going to just mix this up real good with my hands. I think I'm going to put a little bit more Miss Lippy's voodoo dust. Y'all can go to Miss Lippy's website. She's got all kinds of seasonings and they are good. Think it needs a little more toast, but I'm gonna just grab some crackers here. We're gonna use some crackers. These are saltine crackers. 
we're going to mix that up a little bit. Mm. I forgot I was going to go in here with a little bit of these garlic chives. All right. Next up, we're going to see if we can form a little meatballs out of this and taking some of this pepper jack cheese that I rolled up and put right in the middle of it and form a ball around it. Now I got a baking pan here with some tin foil and I sprayed it with some cooking palm or I don't think it's palm nowadays, but y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm just gonna make them balls up there. They're pretty good sized balls because I want them big enough to put that pepper jack cheese in the inside. You don't like pepper jack cheese? Try this out with any kind of cheese you like. I actually had some cheddar cheese here cut up, so it was block cheese. Cut up in little blocks for this, and then I seen that pepper jack cheese. I said, I know pepper jack cheese be better than these meatballs. I would say mine's turning out to be about the size of a tennis ball. Look like we're gonna get six of them. Now I'm gonna wash my hands again, and since I ain't ready to cook these quite yet, I'm gonna set them in the refrigerator. So now we got a little cast iron mini wok, kind of a shape like a mini wok. We're gonna turn our heat on, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of that. While that's warming up, I'm gonna cut this other pepper jack cheese into little bitty bitty strips. Kind of like mincing up garlic. And I'm gonna put it in this sauce too. You may be asking, how do you come up with this stuff? Well guys, there is a recipe but I just look at different recipes and then I take what we got in the ice box and create my own meal kind of on the idea of what I seen on a recipe or seen somebody cook. I like watching them cooking shows. But if you had on hand everything that they cook with on all different recipes, you'd have to have a kitchen bigger than your house just to have refrigerators full of stuff and different seasonings and so I just make my own and go from there. So we're gonna go on and go in with the butter. And that's starting to sizzle, so I'm gonna put the garlic in next. And off these bunching onions, I'm gonna put the white ends in there right now. And I don't know if I told y'all, but we got mushrooms. I can't remember if I told y'all I was using mushrooms or not, but you can't make a mushroom sauce without mushroom skin. I think I put just a little bit too much oil or just a little bit too much butter. That's all right. We're going to brown up them garlic. Onions there. Guys, I'm going to strain some of that off. That's a little bit too much oil and butter. Now I got rid of some of that oil and butter. I had, I had a little too much oil and butter in there. For no more than I'm making here. I'm going to add a pinch of salt and pepper already in here. I'm browning up good. Now we're finna go in 
with a quarter of a cup of red wine. And we're going to let that alcohol cook off for about five minutes here. Adjust my heat down just a little bit. I'm going to go on in with my mushrooms. Cook them a little slower just now and let them cook. Now I'm going to go in with a little more salt and pepper. Some of these dehydrated garlic chives. Then I'm going in with my cream of chicken. And this is why I had the milk out. Now it's going to use a little milk. Turn your heat down low at this point. Add a little milk, a little warm water till you get it to the thickness I want. I think I'm going to thin it down just a little bit more. Now if you had some heavy cream, I wouldn't have used the cream of chicken, but we didn't have no heavy cream. That's why I say I just take a recipe and give me an idea and I take what we got in the, our house and go from there. All right, now we're gonna go in with a little thyme. And our green onions. Taste of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that tasting good. Don't need nothing else. Turn that fire down. Get me a lid and throw it on here and just let this simmer a little bit. I don't know where the lid is to that pot, but that one right there works. So right now I'm going to get everything put up, wash my dishes up, just let that on the lowest simmer as I can get it, let it simmer a little while, and then when it gets close enough time from sharing to be on the way home, we're going to pop them meatballs in that oven there at about 375, and then we're going to do some taste testing. But I can tell you right now, also I'm going to make some mashed potatoes to go with this. I got a feeling it's going to be good. That right there tastes good. Like I said, if I'd have had heavy cream or even half and half, I would have used that. But can't go wrong with cream of chicken when you're cooking neither. Kind of a shortcut. <laughs> it is now time to go into the oven with our meatballs. We'll let them cook probably for about 30 minutes and I'll check. It's time to get them out, guys. They've been in here for 35 minutes. We're going to set them here and let them rest for just a little bit. 
and Sharon should be coming through the door. Well, that looks good. You have some pepper jack or some bend. <laughs> you have some. <laughs> I don't know what you got. <laughs> Venison burger Balls with stuffed with pepper jack cheese, and I made some mushroom sauce to go on. Mm. Yum! Some of them get bigger. Look at that. I see it. Good. And some mushroom sauce made with what we had. <laughs> made with what was in the pantry. That is it. Yeah, that's real good. You're doing good on your new recipes. Guys, yeah, that pepper jack cheese made that venison good. All we had was the sandwich. So I just cut it in strips and rolled it up in little rolls and then. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Can't beat some meatballs and mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. The mushroom sauce turned out good. That's real good. It's all real good. Got a new recipe. No. What? You got a new recipe. I'd have to watch the video again and know what I put in. <laughs> I don't even know what all to put in it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Probably cooked too fast, the rolls. Well. Guys, I didn't make the rolls. She got these from the bakery. And I didn't know you were supposed to take them out and let them thaw and let them rise before you put them in the oven. but. Tastes all right. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell they ain't rose all the way. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was them rolls. I thought it may have been them. Like sometimes you get them frozen biscuits. Right. Yeah, no. I actually, some of those Sister Shumper yeast rolls was out in the other freezer. And that would have really been good. We'd have some fresh bell peppers to oh, yeah. chop up and put in that meat. Yes. I have to remember that dear prep time. Yeah. You just can. This is good. I mean, I don't know what other cheeses. I thought the pepper jack would be better than mm -hmm. just Krauss or whatever. Mm -hmm. Krauss, the, Cheddar, I mean. American or cheddar. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs>